sisters and brothers of the electric universe. So, we got a fun one in this video. This video, we are going to find our words in our compiled words list. We're going to find the word, and then we're going to take all the gunk away and just be left with our word definition. And, and then after that, and probably in another, in the next video after that, we will, um, we'll actually, uh, run whatever's in that definition. So the first step here is to get the definition. We're going to create a new function called, uh, let's call it run word. We're just going to make the whole, everything in one function here, I think. So this, instead of, well, we'll leave this print exists. So under our main process input function here in this big dictionary else if statement that we have we're gonna this is where we're gonna run our uh, run word function so else if compiled words dot contains the input so basically if this compiled words list contains the word that was entered um so say i i had a word named bob and i entered bob and um that, and that was in that compiled word list, then it's gonna find it and it's gonna do this run word function. Uh, this run word function, we want it to take uh, a string as an argument, okay. And so let's, uh, we're gonna pass in the string to it. And the string that we're gonna pass into it is just the input, so you know, whatever the input was there. Okay. Now, okay, so let's go back to the very top of our file here. We need to, in order to, to, to manipulate strings uh, without so much of a hassle, I guess, in Swift, we're going to add uh, a little extension onto the string protocol. And to do that, this is from a, uh, a Stack Overflow website. I will put a link to the website in the description. And just in case I forget to do that, comment and remind me. But, uh, but here's also uh, a link. Um, here's The hyperlink is right here in the code. So it'll be on my GitHub page in the code. Um, <clears throat> so I added a little comment here just Basically what this string protocol extension does is gives us the ability to get the index of a string rather than just a single character. So I'll kind of explain that here as we go along. Um, just for now, just know um, to copy this extension code in here. We're just extending a couple functions. The index function, so like string dot, you know, whatever the string is. So compiled words dot index. So um, instead of having to just say index of a single character, we can say like index of word, and it'll it'll be able to find the starting index of that word. Uh, and then you know these all four of these function extensions do that same. It's it's the same concept where they how they do that. So. All right, so let's go back down to our run word function. We're gonna create a couple, uh, well, we're gonna create a constant and then a couple variables. The constant is gonna be formatted word. It's gonna be a string. And it's just gonna be uh, our four colons, which was our delimiter there, remember when we, in our compiled words, and a space plus our word and then another space. So this formatted word, well, let's get some more into this and then I'll explain things a little bit more in detail or in depth, um, like why we have this extra space here, as long as I remember to. Full definition, string. So this full definition is not actually just a string, it's a string subsequence, which Swift compiler sees as a different type. We're just initializing it with not, you know, just a blank string for right now. Um, so you actually have to declare it as a substring, basically. This is how you declare it as a substring. 
And then we're just gonna have our regular definition. Um, and you'll see why we have two, we have full definition and regular definition here in a second. And these are both subsequences of strings. All right. And so let's do uh, if let word index. So this is, we're getting our word index of compiled words. So we're going to this compiled word string, right? That has all our, that's going to have all our compiled words in it. And we're going to get the end, end index of formatted word. So that is uh, whatever word was passed into our run word function along with this stuff, which is going to be in that compiled word string. Formatted word. So if that exists, so if, if it finds it, it's going to get the, it's going to pass the index into this word index uh, constant. And then we are going to assign compiled words uh, we're going to get a substring of compiled words and assign it to this full definition variable. And the way we get the substring and um, Swift, if you just search Swift string, I believe it's the, probably the top result. Apple developer. <clears throat> just want to show you this real quick here. Um, there's a, this is for what we're doing is looking at a range basically. Okay, so this under this creating a range expression section, there's these, you see dot, dot, and then less than sign, dot, 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 less than sign. And then you see string, 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 a single string, single string, single string. So these are basically ways of searching for through ranges of strings. Uh, so this first one that we're doing, word index dot, 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 is, it is uh, through, no, it's from. So with since our word index is on the left side of the dot, dot, dots, it's gonna return a partial range extending upward from the lower bound. So it's gonna return everything in the compiled word string, starting with, well, starting right after this, this formatted word. And the reason it's going to start after it is because we're getting the end index of formatted word, and then we're using three dots, dots, which returns a partial range extending upward from a lower bound. Okay. So that's our full definition. And right below that, we're going to do let word and if let word index again. And then we want instead of compiled words, we're, we're just looking at our full definition string now. And we want index of the semicolon. So this will, you know, that that's going to be basically the first semicolon it finds in that that full definition string. So it's going to be the first one after our um, our word definition there, our compiled word definition. Um, so it's it's marking the end of things, right? Uh, then definition equals full definition and I will uh, we'll, we'll run we'll run the program and I'll show you how this all works here if you're if it still seems a little confusing um, word index so you see I'm using the dot dot less than symbol this time on the word index and we're only we only have one string right so it's going to be that not that one that's two strings it's this one returns a partial range up to but not including its upper bound. So now we're getting whatever's in this full definition up until the semicolon and not including the semicolon. So that definition then, and we're going to print this just to show it, that definition is just going to be whatever our um, interpreter needs to run for the specific word that the user entered in the interpreter. So let's let's do this. Got it saved here. Okay, so we're gonna make um, 
one function that is flip and it's going to just, uh, we're just going to say 20, 20 plus. It's going to add 20 and 20 together, I guess. I don't know. And then um, make another one called flop and that's going to be 40, 40 minus. And okay. So now we have, we if we look at our compiled words, we have both of them on there, flip and flop. Now, if we search, if we run flip, we should just get 2020 plus because of the way we set up our indexes and our ranges here for of our substrings. We should just get 2020 plus. And in fourth, flip, this first word is actually the name of the, the definition of the word or the function. Um, the rest is what it actually does. So we only want this part. Flop would be the name of the function or the word. The 40, 40, and minus would be what it does. So it'd be like saying, um, you know, in a lot of, in Swift, it would be like saying func uh, flip 20 plus 20, basically. And, you know, like let... Uh, or just maybe just something like this, print 20 plus 20. That's basically exactly what this would do um, if it were in Swift or a higher level language. So um, so now if we run this, it's not going to run that. It's not going to run this right now. It's just getting these words for us so that we're prepared so that we have, you know, we get rid of all this other gunk, this, this stuff, and we just have the, what we need uh, to to process exists in dict and there it is 2020 20 plus if we do flop 40 40 minus so we're getting what we need let's try adding something else here bob colon apostrophe burgers <laughs> uh, okay and if we do bob apostrophe s burgers one last thing so at the, in our run word function we have this um, formatted word where we're, we're doing our search and we're basically using this to search through our compiled words. And I have uh, this, I wanted to explain this plus space here. Um, so that's to prevent an issue that, you know, say, uh, say we had a um, Bob 10, 10, 220 word, and then we had a flop, you know, um, I, B, B, plus word, I don't know, something like that. So, and then let's say we had uh, Baba, Boba, and that was Flop, Bob, or something like that. So, if we didn't have this space at the end, it would just search for this plus our word in that compiled word string. And if it found this first, if this was in a lower index, then it would use this because this would still have that B-O-B. This would have everything that it was looking for. By adding the space, then it's gonna look for a space at the end of it too. So it's gonna look for the full word and make sure that there's no other, you know, nothing else extending that. So that's why I added that and just wanted to explain that real quick. So that's it. I think that's, that's a good place to stop here for this one. So we're, we're getting our definition now. Uh, the next thing we're going to have to do is uh, we're going to have to use that definition, you know, and make it, um, we're going to have to basically process it the same way we process these guys. That'll be the next video. Stay tuned and, uh, you know, subscribe if you want to get alerted for that kind of stuff. Um, and thanks for watching. Peace out.